Okay, well, when asked uh, if he thought there was too much suffering in the world, the composer John Cage said, uh, not too much, just right. And uh, not everyone is convinced that we need to prioritise uh, getting rid of suffering or even minimising suffering. Um, but the World Transhumanist Association, which is now uh, rebranded as Humanity Plus, uh, is, co is committed uh, to the well-being of all sentience, which is uh, an astonishingly ambitious uh, goal, but one I'm going to argue is technically feasible. Um, to anyone uh, sceptical that suffering should be a priority, um, all I can say is perhaps let's, let's, next time you catch your hand in the door or have a bad toothache or a migraine, um, it is just shocking just how, uh, how bad, how subjectively terrible suffering it worse can be. And I hope no one now is as severely depressed or, or lovelorn uh, or in severe pain. Um, but if you, if, if you were, it, it my words would uh, probably have rather more resonance than they might do if you're uh, relaxed uh, and enjoying life. Um, anyway, what I'm going to do now is just set out uh, the challenge uh, we face if we are ever to uh, eliminate suffering altogether. Uh, start off with uh, physical pain. Uh, there are uh, hundreds of millions of people in the world today who suffer from uh, chronic pain syndrome. Uh, and even people who don't suffer from uh, chronic pain nonetheless will uh, suffer episodes of, uh, of acute pain. And though uh, it can be treated, uh, uh, opioids, opioid drugs, strong narcotics as we know have, uh, have uh, many side effects. Um, then there is the problem of psychological pain and distress. Uh, for example, depression. Uh, each year in the world almost one million people uh, take their own lives, uh, several million more uh, have suicide attempts, and perhaps hundreds of millions uh, of people more. For them, the problem is not that life is too short, but is that life is too long. Um, and most of us, thankfully, do not suffer from clinical depression, but nonetheless, there is the phenomenon of the so-called uh, hedonic treadmill. Uh, which essentially means that it is impossible to uh, stay very high or very, very low uh, for too long. The, uh, the brain has a very efficient set of uh, negative feedback mechanisms and though uh, uh, throughout uh, uh, human history uh, people have strived to improve uh, their, co uh, their condition and one thinks of the the wonders of modern civilization, it's extremely debatable whether our actual level of well-being or ill-being is actually any, uh, our well-being is any uh, uh, greater than, uh, than hunter-gatherers on the African uh, savannah. And I said part of the, the reason is the <coughs> treadmill, that it is uh, genetically adaptive to spend a lot of the time uh, uh, chronically um, discontented uh, uh, there is no uh, evolutionary genetic premium uh, in being just uh, uh, happy and satisfied with one's lot. Um, much more to be said there. Um, domestic pets, now even if one were to deal with uh, 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 human uh, suffering, uh, uh, clearly something like cats, uh, how on earth are you going to get rid of suffering in uh, obligate, uh, 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 obligate carnivores like, uh, like uh, cats who kill uh, millions of uh, small rodents uh, uh, each year and birds. And uh, wildlife, nature red in tooth and claw. Um, I expect most of us enjoy watching wildlife documentaries, but it's a very uh, disnified, bandified view of the living world. Uh, they, uh, they, they tend to uh, they tend to show, uh, it's not particularly uh, entertaining watching creatures uh, dying of thirst or hunger. Um, some people do find it more entertaining uh, watching uh, animals being uh, torn limb from limb. Um, but uh, e even so, nonetheless, at least on TV, uh, the full goriness of nature 
uh, uh, letting tooth and claw is not generally shown. Um, okay, uh, just to just to go into a little more uh, detail uh, about physical pain. Um, not everyone actually uh, experiences uh, phys uh, physical physical pain. Um, there are a, a small minority of people who suffer from uh, con congenital uh, analgesia, um, and like this uh, fellow uh, uh, there, who can uh, do, who could do uh, extremely uh, uh, risky uh, things. Unfortunately, the 14-year-old in question uh, died at the age of 14 after jumping off a tall uh, a building to impress his friends. Um, so. One might, so intuitively one might think therefore that uh, it's going to be impossible to eliminate physical pain. It has this vital signaling role. Um, yes, the hedonic uh, treadmill um, uh, again. Um, one might ask uh, why is it that uh, most of the time uh, our hedonic tone, so to speak, is, uh, is, is neutral. Uh, with a few with a few people being naturally extremely happy and a, a larger number of people suffering from clinical or, or subclinical depression. Now the answer here it seems or at least evolutionary psych psychologists speculate uh, lies in so-called rank theory uh, that if one is uh, depression only seems to occur in uh, social social animals um, and if you live in a uh, a predator-rich environment, it is uh, adaptive to belong to a tribal group. Um, but nonetheless, within the context of the tribe, uh, there is uh, uh, competition, jockeying for, for, for position, um, and it seems to be that depression and, and low mood in general is the internalised correlate of the losing uh, sub, subroutine. Um, and it, if, if you look at uh, depressed people, they tend to be uh, uh, hunched, uh, uh, their body posture, similar to let's say someone who has been let's say defeated at, at, at a game uh, and uh, probably I mean the, the far greater incidence of depression and de depressive disorder in our society uh, as distinct from uh, uh, mania, or hypermania, probably tells us something about the ancestral environment in which we, in which we evolved. Um, Perhaps it's just briefly worth uh, saying just a little bit about the opposite of, of, of depression, uh, uh, mania. Um, there are some forms of uh, extreme good mood, so-called hypothymia, that are not uh, uh, marked by greater uh, excitement or grandiosity, but the, there is a condition, uh, unipolar uh, uh, mania, and also bipolar disorder, um, in which uh, people sometimes experience uh, extreme uh, good mood. Um, the menu is not always uh, uh, euphoric, sometimes it's dysphoric or a dysphoric or mixed state, but there doesn't seem to be uh, any uh, uh, biological or genetic reason that stops us being uh, extremely uh, happy, happy all the time. It's not wouldn't have been harder for nature to engineer uh, extreme happiness rather than extreme misery. It seems to have been to do with the nature of selection pressure um, in the ancestral environment. Okay, next. Uh, challenge. I'm um, just just to set the context uh, again. I'm describing the challenges that we face before we can uh, get rid of suffering. Um, meat eating. Um, now, uh, pigs, for example, uh, seem to have the intellectual capacity of different estimates between a two and a three-year-old human, uh, and. Uh, more relevant, I think, from an eth ethical perspective, uh, all the indications are that they are as uh, sentient uh, uh, too. Uh, and if uh, if humans kept members of our own species in the way we uh, kept uh, pigs, let's say, and other similar non-human animals in factory farms, uh, it'd be locked up, guilty of horrendous uh, uh, ch child abuse. Um, and uh, the reason we do it is clearly that uh, we like the taste of meat. 
Um, it's uh, optional, we don't need to do so, but nonetheless in some sense we feel that the uh, taste of meat uh, outweighs uh, the suffering that went into its production. Um, and yes, uh, clearly it's very difficult to speculate what will be the uh, moral framework uh, of our uh, descendants, but I take seriously the possibility that uh, uh, they will uh, regard what we do to uh, non-human animals uh, in our factory farms and slaughterhouses and say crime on the path of, uh, of the Holocaust, which, uh, uh, yes, that might seem uh, uh, rhetoric or anything, but it, it happens to be what I believe. I hope I'm wrong. Um, once again, uh, domestic cats, uh, just, just, just as, as an example. Um, uh, uh, now, compared to all the other uh, ills uh, of the world, the plight of uh, a mouse being uh, tormented by a cat or uh, uh, eaten alive or something like that might not seem uh, uh, particularly uh, urgent, but nonetheless, uh, yes, it's, it's, it, if, if we are to take the abolitionist project to completion, it is something we would need to address. Um, and uh, I'm actually going to take the liberty of actually reading uh, uh, this quote from, uh, from Richard Dawkins, because it bears repeating. Um, the total amount of suffering per year in the natural world is beyond all decent contemplation. During the minute that it takes me to compose this sentence, thousands of animals are being eaten alive, many others are running for their lives, whimpering with fear, others are slowly being devoured from within by rasping parasites, thousands of all kinds are dying of starvation, thirst and disease. It must be so. If there ever is a time of plenty, this very fact will automatically lead to an increase in the population until the natural state of starvation and misery is, uh, is restored. So, that's quite a, uh, a, a challenge. Um, okay, physical pain. Um, uh, it's only quite recently been discovered that a single gene seems to play uh, the dominant role in our level of pain sensitivity, uh, the, the uh, SCN9A uh, gene. Uh, there are other uh, uh, genes involved, so I'm slightly oversimplifying here, but nonetheless, uh, nonsense mutations of the SCN9A uh, 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 gene lead to complete uh, insensitivity, other variant uh, alleles uh, lead uh, to low pain sensitivity and uh, basically a whole uh, host of these different alleles um, and within the next decade or two uh, in, in principle, uh, thanks to um, uh, uh, in vitro fertilization, pre-implantation uh, diagnosis, if the uh, consensus uh, existed, it would be possible uh, to actually choose the level of uh, pain sensitivity of our future offspring. Now, the perhaps the long-term goal of getting rid of physical pain altogether would require far greater high-tech uh, 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 high interventions. Um, uh, for instance, one could have uh, uh, prosthetic uh, uh, devices that, in the case of a small child, automatically withdrew uh, uh, the, the child's hands, or alternatively, uh, uh, sharp uh, dips in their gradient of, of well-being without it amounting to suffering. But as a, at least as, a, as an interim uh, solution, uh, then uh, a state of low pain sensitivity uh, would seem to be the ethical, uh, the, the, the ethical option. Now, clearly, one wouldn't. Uh, uh, rush into this. Jim, sir, you're, you're, you're shaking your head, so I came to... Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Mostly because you want to withdraw from dangerous situations, such as burning, mm -hmm. hot water, sharp knives, mm -hmm. uh, whatever it may be. It's, the pain gives uh, withdrawal. It may only be a spinal reflex, mm -hmm. but there is some reflex, and if you don't feel the pain, then you injure yourself more. Yes, which is why... Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's when one talks of the uh, possibility of abolishing physical uh, pain, um, two options. One, clearly one can design, uh, as we know from our uh, uh, silicon robots, uh, creatures that are, uh, or, or uh, 
systems that are capable of nociception responding to uh, noxious stimuli, um, 